Scientists estimate 10 to 30 percent of COVID patients will experience long COVID. This is the first time we've had so many millions of people experiencing this kind of situation. The system is getting overwhelmed. Wait time right now for long COVID is six weeks. Olympic gold medalist Alex Kopach is used to being out of breath behind his bobsled. The last year when the then 31 year old caught COVID, he felt his breath taken away like never before. It took about four months after he was released, Kopach says, before he could breathe normally again. One advocate for long haulers estimated that Americans with long COVID lost about $230 billion a year. For over two years, the world has been severely affected by the COVID-19 pandemic. Acute infection of COVID-19 can last up to two weeks. However, it's been reported that people are experiencing persisting health problems even after they stop testing positive for COVID-19 and after their acute infection symptoms, such as fever and cough, have subsided. The World Health Organization has recognized this and termed it as the post-COVID-19 condition, but commonly reported as long COVID. So I have here with me today, Dr. Roger McIntyre. He is the professor of psychiatry and pharmacology at the University of Toronto. He is also the executive director of the Brain and Cognition and Discovery Foundation. Kayla, great to be with you covering this very, very important topic affecting so many people. Thank you, thank you. We wanted to talk a little bit about long COVID today. We also talk about the uh, clinical trial that your group is doing at the Brain and Cognition Discovery Foundation. Great, let's get started. Yeah, so why don't we start off with what is long COVID and how is it defined? Well, you know, it's a really good point you started off with, Kayla, that we have many different words and different descriptions and labels. Some people call it long COVID, long hauler, post COVID post-acute sequelae of COVID, what it is, it is a condition that's affecting a lot of people wherein they've had a prior infection of COVID. For the most part, the infection, as far as we can tell, has resolved with respect to the acute infection, but now the person is suffering from a long list of difficulties. And these symptoms now exceeded 200 symptoms, ranging from brain fog, fatigue, lacking motivation, being down, can't sleep, but here's the key part, Kayla. These symptoms are not just present and debilitating. In other words, it really reduces their quality of life. It persists for several months. In other, in other words, it doesn't last for a week or two. It goes on for months. And this is really affecting a lot of people. So what would you say is the percentage of people who have first had COVID-19 that go on to experience long COVID? Kayla, it's a great question. And the question doesn't lend itself to an easy answer, in part because we're still trying to figure out what is this long COVID. And a lot of people have had COVID, didn't even know it. And a lot of people have symptoms and they may have thought it's something else because it has all these types of vague symptoms. But taken together, the best estimates are that somewhere between 10 to 25%, maybe 30% of people who had COVID, in fact, now have long COVID. And out of those people, maybe in your own experience, uh, what would, maybe you really even touched on it, but what are the most commonly reported long COVID symptoms that you're seeing? Yeah, great point. And Kayla, what's so interesting is that the list, the drop down menu is getting longer and longer of symptoms that people are experiencing and any organ system can be involved. Any part of your body can be affected. That's the first part. But the most common symptoms people are reporting is they're feeling they got this brain fog. Their mind is just foggy, they can't focus, can't pay attention. I had one person say that my Pentium chip is like really slowed down. They can't really get the wheels going inside their mind. Secondly, people are complaining of terrible fatigue, like terrible fatigue, like they've never experienced before. Mind fatigue, like mental fatigue, but also physical fatigue as well. Other symptoms, long list. Other symptoms could be physical symptoms. A lot of people say they lost their taste and smell for a while. Some people are saying they're getting kind of quirky heartbeats, they're getting palpitations, some people are getting pins and needles in their, their hands, their feet. The list is endless. And what people consistently tell us is that the brain fog and the fatigue are really, really difficult. Those are the most difficult symptoms, can't take care of their duties at home, their family, their work, their schooling, whatever the case may be. And so this is a very significant impact to people's everyday life and do we have any treatments right now for long COVID? Is there something out there that people can access? Well, right now we don't have an established treatment. In other words, established by good, rigorous medical research. And we don't have a treatment that's been FDA approved or approved by any regulator around the world for long COVID. But here's the good news. 
the good news is, is that there's a lot of research going on right now trying to better understand not just long COVID, but how can we provide a therapeutic, a treatment. And there's over several dozen different therapeutics that are under development, people are looking at, we're looking at one, we'll get into that conversation shortly. So I remain very optimistic that we're gonna figure out what's going on here, and I would remain equally optimistic that we're gonna find some treatment that can really help not just long COVID generally, but help some of those key symptoms, the brain fog, the fatigue, that's so impairing to people's lives. Um, and so let's talk a little bit more about the research that you're doing. You have a Health Canada approved clinical trial right now looking at long COVID. Do you wanna say a little bit more about that? We do, and the reason we wanted to do the study is because of what we've been talking about. This is a newly originated, very severe, very impairing condition that's affecting so many people around the world. We need therapeutics. And our clinical trial is a clinical trial that seeks to really address two related questions. The first and most important question, can we help people's thinking, this brain fog, this fatigue around their thinking? The second related question is, what's going on here? What's going on in the brain, the body? What's causing this? So we have a question as to let's get people better. In other words, when the house is on fire, let's get the fire taken out and we'll figure out what's causing the fire at the same time. And that's exactly how I see this. And this is the first trial like this. We call it a randomized, double-blind, placebo-controlled trial. All that really means is people will get either the treatment that we're looking at to test, or they're gonna get a uh, placebo, and we're gonna look at the changes across time in many, many aspects, including not limited to that brain fog and the fatigue. Okay, and so what therapeutic are you testing in this trial? Yeah, the therapeutic that we're testing in this clinical trial is a medication called 40 oxytine. Now, 40 oxytine is a medication that's been available around the world for most of the past decade. It is actually labeled as an antidepressant. Many people have asked me, Kayla, oh, does that mean that you think COVID is really just depression? No, not at all. We very often will use medications for many different purposes. For example, aspirin. Everyone knows aspirin. You use it for a headache, if you get a fever, some people take it to thin their blood, they have heart disease. So we use medications for different reasons. In 40 oxygen, we chose for a host of reasons. One of which is, is that it's a medication that's been shown to help brain fog in people who have other types of problems. So that was intuitive. Another reason we decided to choose this medication is that it helps people's fatigue. It's a really anti-fatigue drug. People feel more motivated. Two other reasons, Kayla, I'll just mention. One is that this drug is also an anti-inflammatory. And we think, we don't know, that there's something wrong with the immune system in these people and it makes sense to try and reset their immune system. One final comment, some people think that what's causing COVID, Kayla, is that there may be something wrong with blood clotting taking place in the body. And this drug has been shown to affect blood clotting positively, perhaps, in some models. So taken together, here's a condition, long COVID. People are tired, brain fog. We think the immune system is dysregulated. And this drug seems to be able to affect all of these areas. So we're very, very hopeful. Okay, so if I understood this correctly, if, if someone wanted to be a part of this trial, they might get the study drug, which is vortioxetine, or they might get the placebo. Is that correct? That is correct. And so are there any side effects associated with vortioxetine? Is something like that come up when you speak to participants? Absolutely. There's side effects with everything. The side effects with placebo. So everything has side effects. The other reason we chose this medication, 40 oxytine, is that when you look at the t number of side effects, how severe they are, how problematic, this one's actually pretty good. It actually has side effects, but they're relatively manageable. Some people might get a little nausea, maybe for a day or two, a few days, but for the most part, that's not been a deal breaker for most people. And this is a medication we've used for most of the decade, so uh, last decade, so we know this is a medication that's quite agreeable to most people. So that's why we chose this one, because we, have all those aspects we talked about, helps their thinking, their motivation, and has anti-inflammatory properties, but also it's one that agrees with people. So some people get some nausea, that's probably the more uh, side effect we hear from some people, but it tends to go away in a few days. Most say, ah, went away, no big deal. Right, and so I guess as a you know nonprofit organization doing this clinical trial in Toronto, is this actually available to people across Canada, or do you have to be in Toronto to be part of this? What a great question. You can be anywhere in Canada and be potentially eligible for the study. Now, we're here in downtown Toronto. We have our office in downtown Toronto. All the staff is there and so on, and we welcome people who are interested or potentially eligible to, in fact, see us in our main office. 
but we appreciate this is a big country and for a variety of reasons access to downtown Toronto is not always perfect so there are ways that we can uh, have people in the study who may not even live in Toronto it could be in Ontario be in any province or territory across the country okay and so you know there are a lot of people affected by long COVID uh, they might be interested in this study why don't you say a bit more about who might be eligible this is such a great question because long COVID is common, but people have other problems as well. They may have other medical problems, other conditions, etc. And let's start off if we could just with the age. Anyone who's 18 years of age or over is potentially eligible. Secondly, for anyone from any background is potentially eligible. Now, when it comes to the long COVID, you have to have had uh, a prior infection with COVID. And what our preference is strongly is that there's some type of documentation of this. Do you have a, a, a test positive? Does, does your healthcare provider have evidence of this? And that's something we want because we want to make sure you've had COVID. Now for some people we recognize those documents may not be readily available. You can certainly contact our team, our staff, and maybe walk through some scenarios where we can maybe uh, try to confirm your infection indirectly. The other part is that you got long COVID. In other words, you've had the symptoms that persisted for a few months. So if you've had COVID two weeks ago, and you're having a lot of symptoms today, that's not long COVID. It has to go on for at least three months. So that's one thing to keep in mind. Now, some people in fact have asked us, well, what if I you know, smoke cigarettes? What if I'm overweight? What if I have heart disease? What if I have this or other medical problems? You could be eligible. Give the team uh, a call. We'll be happy to go through that. You would not be necessarily ineligible for the study. Now, some people we see have uh, asked us, well, what if I uh, am abusing drugs? like alcohol or illicit substance. That'd be one of the reasons you could not be in the study, but there's other types of medications people take, prescription medications over the counter for other reasons, and there could be scenarios you could be eligible for the study. So if you have other medical problems or take pills for other reasons or what have you, you could certainly be eligible. But the key message, Kayla, is give the team a call and we'll walk through very quickly with you uh, a, a drop down to see if in fact you could be eligible. And maybe in your experience, I'm, I'm sure you're already recruiting participants right now. Um, have you heard anyone who's maybe hesitant about enrolling because they might get placebo? How would you address that concern? Yeah, absolutely. Look, people are suffering. They want to get better. And we're, we're hoping that this research will provide a proven safe therapeutic for long COVID. We, in fact, have to do a placebo controlled trial that is the most rigorous way of knowing whether the drug is really helping. So people who get assigned to placebo, and I've done this for over 20 years, I've done studies with placebo, often will say to me, well, I don't want placebo, I'm not getting any treatment. Well, in actual fact, you still are getting treatment. You're coming to see our team, you're getting your cognition measured, a variety of measures are taking place. We're gonna have a lot of information that you might find interesting. You're also gonna receive a lot of education on long COVID. And we already know that a large number of people benefit from placebo, no matter what the medical condition is. So in other words, placebo is not no treatment. Placebo is in fact a uh, important arm, so we can know whether the other treatment is in fact efficacious. So the takeaway is placebo is not no treatment. Placebo is an intervention that does have therapeutic effects, but we need it to know whether or not our investigational approach with bortioxetine is doing something even better. Amazing, and um, I just want to touch a little bit more on the cognitive measures that you just mentioned. So if someone is deemed eligible, they, they enter this trial and they're assigned to whichever they're going to receive, the bortioxetine or the placebo, what does the study experience look like to them? What do they have to participate in? Yeah, absolutely. So we ask people to come to the clinic where they'll be with our staff, there'll be a host of measures taking place, It'll begin, of course, with uh, making sure you're eligible. And we have uh, medical staff that'll just make sure you're medically cleared and uh, the staff can discuss with uh, people who are interested what that looks like. And then we're gonna take a variety of measures of your brain fog, your cognition, your thinking capacity, your energy, your mood, a whole long list of, of, of symptoms, as well as take some blood to learn more about your blood parameters. Then what'll happen is the study's eight weeks in duration in other words, it, you'll be randomly assigned the placebo or the treatment for up to eight weeks. And during that time, there's uh, contact with our staff periodically. These would be preferably in person, but also can be done virtually, as we talked about. And there'll be some additional measures taken at each time point. 
and at eight weeks, if that is the end point, it's done. So it's not that long, it's relatively short, and we think that's a long enough runway to know whether or not we've got a viable and helpful treatment. So yeah, maybe one final question for us today. Uh, what would you say to someone who might want to access 40 oxetine for the treatment of long COVID, but in an off-label prescription from their doctor, rather than enrolling in a study like this? Look, first of all, I completely understand that someone wants to try some treatment. People are very desperate, they're suffering, and they want to try something to alleviate the distress. But I would also say that we should not take treatments unless they've been shown to work. And the scientific community right now is looking at different types of treatments. We don't know yet whether vortioxetine can really help this problem. Obviously, we hope it does. And we're going to know after the study is completed later on this year whether that is the case. So I would not make any recommendation for anything, including long COVID, that people would try something unless it's been shown to be safe and effective. So that's why we have prioritized. Let's do the study first. If you're interested, you can maybe be a participant if you meet eligibility. Let's do the study first. Let's show that it works if it does and that it's safe in this situation. And if that's the case, then we'll make certainly recommendations to consider. But I would not consider taking the treatment unless we have that data first. And do you have any final comments uh, about the trial or about long COVID? Yeah, I think for me, what I remain is very optimistic. I recognize, hence we're doing the study, how awful this condition has been. I think a lot of people feel as though they're getting blown off, frankly. They don't feel their doctor, their nurse, the healthcare system is taking them seriously. There's a lot of complaints we hear from people like that. This is a real problem. People are suffering. And we recognize that, and so much so we went to the action mode, I meaning we're doing this study with a treatment that we really believe could really deliver on the key symptoms that are more impairing to people, and maybe, my fingers are crossed, could also fix the underlying problem in the immune system. That's me uh, hoping very much. So I think that we remain hopeful. If you're interested, don't wait. Definitely reach out to the team. We will be continuing to recruit for the uh, near term, but the study is building up very, very quickly. And I think that's one key point I'll finish with. Well, thank you so much for joining us today, Dr. McIntyre. If you want to find out more information about BCDF and the clinical trial on long COVID and how to participate, you can contact us at www.bcdfoundation.ca or by calling us at 647-450-8045.